Hi YouTube, thanks for tuning in to today's oil painting time lapse, which features a portrait of my dog Mushroom surrounded by mushrooms. I actually filmed this video on the last day of 2019 because I whimsically decided to squeeze in one final painting before the year was over. So I started this painting on the afternoon of December 30th and finished it in the morning of December 31st. Usually before I begin a painting, I go through a somewhat extensive planning stage that includes concept sketching, digital color mock-ups, transferring the concept sketch, preparing my palette, pre-mixing my colors, etc. But for this piece, I was feeling a little impatient and just eager to start, so I decided to skip all the prep work and just dive right into the painting stage. It was quite a fun change of pace to go into a painting with no solid plan in mind and no concrete vision of what I wanted the final painting to look like. Other than the photo reference of my dog, Mushroom, I pretty much had no other guidelines. All I knew was that I wanted to include actual mushrooms around her and that I wanted this painting to be a lightweight and fun exercise that I would be able to complete in less than one day. Since I didn't even settle on a color scheme, there was no need to pre-mix any paint. Instead, I just filled my palette with a handful of my favorite colors and then mixed them on the go, hoping that everything I squeezed onto my palette would be enough to suit the needs of my painting. If you'd like to see a 60 minute tutorial of this painting where I go over the colors I used and my on the go color mixing process, as well as hundreds of hours of exclusive content, you can check out patreon.com slash happy artist. Though I don't typically paint using such an improvisational process, I think it was an incredibly valuable exercise to help me break out of a creative rut. Sometimes my inspiration can be very fickle which I have been experiencing a lot this past year, actually. Um, I think it's a result of having worked and hustled too intensely in the years leading up to the burnout. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human. We don't have a limitless amount of energies or ideas or drive. And I've made mistakes in the past where I would deal with burnout by completely removing myself from my work and just hoping that an extensive resting period will help me instantly recharge back to 100%. I would hope that after a vacation or a week off, I would be able to dive back into work full force and stronger than ever. But lately I've realized that maybe this expectation is a little too unrealistic. I mean, it took me years to work myself to a point where I started to feel depleted and burned out and it wasn't going to be fixed overnight. I realized that if burnout was caused by repeating exhausting, unhealthy habits on a daily basis, stretched over a long period of time, then to recover from the burnout, it would also require a long period of time. I needed to ease back into the swing of things, not dive back in full force. So instead of coming back from a week-long vacation, having the expectation that I would be able to paint something grander and better than before, I should have just been working on simple, fun, and lightweight projects to warm up my sore creative muscles. Small, cute paintings like this one help me dip my feet back into the pond without drowning myself. And the fact that I made it a goal to spend less than 24 hours on this painting also alleviated some of my natural, perfectionist tendencies, which honestly is more of a curse than a blessing since what happens is I usually end up wasting so much time fine-tuning little details on one painting that don't end up making a huge difference, but then I end up neglecting the rest of my projects and deadlines because I've wasted so much time on this one piece. So this painting helped teach me how to pace my process more efficiently so that I was painting smarter, not longer. I remember in college, we always used to say that the best way to study is not to study for super long hours, but rather to find a way to study most efficiently so you can maximize the hours that you do invest into studying. And I feel like lately I've realized that painting and creating art is the same way. Even though it's great to keep filling in details and making things more refined, um, sometimes it's not always necessary and it prevents me from moving on to other projects or from making videos or from posting social media. These are all things that deserve my time and attention and help prolong or um, help me 
keep my art career and art business going. So by wasting so much time on the little nitpicky final details of a painting and taking that time away from other projects that need my attention, I wasn't really doing myself any favors. In some ways, I actually had it more correct in the beginning when I wasn't so experienced because I just didn't have the skills or the vision to render things to such a fine level of detail. So I ended up spending less time in the beginning on my pieces. And looking back now, I don't think my earlier works were inferior or worse than my later works just because they had less detail. I think a lot of my growth comes from just finding my own voice as an artist and becoming more comfortable with my own signature style. But Honestly, the level of detail is not as important as making high quality artworks. And I don't think a high level of detail is the sole indicator of quality or of um, beauty or of a connection that you can make with a painting. It's simply one of the many factors that makes paintings interesting, but it's not the only thing that matters. So with small studies like this, it's a really helpful reminder that I need to check myself when I'm getting too lost in um, stages of the painting process that aren't very important. And also to remind myself of what a healthy, productive and efficient pace feels like. There's a certain momentum that works well. And I think for a long time, I've been very slow and taking my time. Um, so now I'm actually able to remember and slowly ease back into um, a healthier and more productive momentum. This painting also taught me to not rely so much on planning everything out and instead to trust in my improvisational skills and my gut instincts. I feel like in the past when I planned my artwork out more and more, it gave me a sense of security in a way, uh, in the sense that I wouldn't bump into as many mistakes or accidents because I had the entire blueprint beginning to end planned out so I wouldn't have to deal with encountering anything unexpected or having to repaint or fix anything because I wasn't well prepared enough you know but I think over time uh, it got a little bit out of hand and I became too overly prepared to the point where it was taking away some of the special magic in uh, letting things evolve on their own or even the magic in making a mistake you know, our favorite Bob Ross always says, sometimes mistakes are just happy accidents. So when I stepped away from following my self-imposed rule book, I became more open to discovering new possibilities for how the painting could look. And I was able to let the artwork evolve freely on its own. And ultimately, when I didn't have a definitive destination or end goal in mind, I was able to take my time, stop and smell the roses, and explore some of the unexpectedly delightful detours along the way. And that about wraps up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching with me and for spending your time listening to me ramble. As usual, you can find all of the art supplies I used today in the video description. I'm planning on making a series featuring all of my pets in a similar style and aesthetic so that in the end I can have a collection of four little paintings for our house that pay homage to how much we love our little furry family. So look out for more similar videos in the future. But if you all enjoyed today's topic of conversation, um, feel free to leave me your feedback or share some of your own stories in the comments. I always love interacting with you all and seeing what kind of video topics I should cover next based on your feedback and what you all want to hear from me. So if you'd like to see a more comprehensive, dedicated video where I talk about burnout and how to watch out for the signs of burnout and how to avoid it, but also more importantly, how to properly recover from burnout, um, please let me know and I would be happy to make that for you. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. All available at patreon.com slash happydartist. 
I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. I wanted to quickly thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community. I've actually enjoyed using Squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.